For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi-Fi, small cell, and much more. Comscope. Thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings. We've got a great show for you today, and this is one of those much more shows that our regular viewers know that I'm fond of doing. This week, we're going to take you inside the Dell World Exhibition, which wrapped up just yesterday right here in Austin, Texas. But first, I wanted to run through a few of the, from my perspective, major headlines this week that we covered here at RCR Wireless. First and foremost, the suggestion that Comcast, a cable company, might be making an MVNO play piggybacking off of Verizon Wireless Spectrum assets. Now, neither of the companies have said anything about this, but uh, Fran Shamo, the CTO of Verizon, sort of let this slip in an earnings call last week. So essentially, the background here is that in 2012, Verizon made a $6.3 billion deal with Comcast, Time Warner, and Bright House that gave them a four-year MVNO option using uh, Verizon Spectrum assets. So it'll be really interesting to see here. We see with the AT&T DirecTV deal sort of that convergence going from telecom to cable. So this is the other way. So really could be an interesting story to watch, and I'll... Uh, remind our viewers that the only other sort of cable company that's moved into the NVNO space is Cablevision with their freewheel service. So we're going to follow that story for you. More big carrier news, AT&T reported really uh, strong growth in this quarter. They had their earnings call earlier in the week and uh, all told they had 2.5 million new net connections. Now this beats the uh, projections associated with their growth by about 500,000 connections. So that's a really strong and, uh, you know, we've got a lot of other carrier financial news that's up on RCR Wireless. Uh, my colleague Dan Meyer's been covering these for you. Uh, so far, we've got Verizon and AT&T up there. We'll have Sprint and T-Mobile in the next few weeks as those earnings are announced. And, you know, I mentioned the focus of HetNet Happenings this week is Dell World. Uh, you know, Dell made some huge news this week when they announced that they were going to buy EMC for $67 billion dollars. So the new combined company has a potential revenue of about $80 billion. So that's really big news. Instead of me telling you about it, though, let's hear Michael Dell talk about the EMC deal. Uh, I do want to talk about the news uh, of, of last week, the little news we made as it relates to EMC. And we're tremendously excited about this combination. It gives us a world-leading company in the four... Uh, significant areas of IT today in servers, storage, virtualization, and PCs, and it gives us an incredible position in the IT of tomorrow. Digital transformation, converged infrastructure, uh, the software-defined data center, hybrid cloud, security, and mobile. The combination also gives us an incredibly strong go-to-market engine with access to the world's largest companies, uh, as well as an incredible reach into small and medium-sized businesses and emerging markets around the world. This is combined with the R&D and innovation engine uh, of EMC and Dell together, and the world-class supply chain uh, that Dell has been known for. An incredible scale, a company with uh, more than $80 billion in revenue. And in 22, in, in, in the leader quadrant, in 22 Gartner Magic Quadrants, all operated as a privately controlled company. Uh, so we're incredibly excited about this combination. I uh, also want to highlight in our press release, you're going to see the results from our second global technology in, index, uh, adoption index where we speak with mid-market mid, mid companies about their adoption of new technologies like cloud, big data, and mobile security. 
you know, I really enjoyed this next presentation that we're going to look uh, look at. This is uh, Lee Burnett, who is a uh, marketing representative from Dell, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what he calls future tech, which is stuff that, uh, you know, the nuts and bolts are to some extent in place right now, but widespread adoption and commercialization is still uh, somewhere in the future. So we're going to hear Lee talk a little bit about augmented reality and a lot about the Internet of Things and some of the different applications of that. Let's hear from Lee Burnett. Okay, the most important thing is going to take pictures because I need a picture with Steve in the background. He's actually one of the guys that hired me at Delta. Oh, of course, we'll, we'll get to the picture. There. So there we go. We got Steve right there. So it does pictures, which is the most yeah. important thing to me. I know there's a lot of business applications, but that's good. Thank hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. I appreciate it. Some really cool stuff that we're doing at Dell, and a lot of this, like we've talked about before, is ready now, and a lot of it isn't ready now, and we're incorporating different aspects of it as we go forward. So everything we talked about is in the kiosks that are on the light gray area here. And what we wanted to encourage you to do is check out some of the other areas. Because we have some really interesting things. When we talk about resilient computing, you go right around this corner, there's an area here with some racks and a big red button. If you go press that big red button, just look at what happens. It's a cool demo of complete failover from one whole rack to another where the end user doesn't notice a thing. And it's instantaneous. The next one is the Future Ready Enterprise. Now, I'm going to spend a second on this, because if you've been at Dell World more than five minutes, you've probably heard the term future ready. And I'm in marketing, I've also been in sales, so I know the you know, marketing versus sales thing, it sounds very marketing, and it's a good philosophy. But here's why it resonates. Because when I say future ready, and I talk about workloads, and if you think about the workload that your data center does today, and handles today, two years ago, was, the day, was that workload the same? In most cases, it wasn't anywhere close to what it is today with the exponential growth of data. But, and the question is, in two years from now, are you going to anticipate every you know, roadblock and everything that you have to navigate to get to two years from now when it, when it comes to workloads? And what we do with our data center and future ready data center is really work with customers on workloads to say, based on what we see globally, since we're one of the last end-to-end, -end, the last end-to-end -end solutions provider, we see everything from client to cloud, worldwide, on a daily basis, thousands of times over. And that gives us a unique insight to customers' business problems and situations that allows us to, to custom tailor these solutions to help fit whatever problem or need that you have. And so when you talk future ready data center, you know, we talk about workloads. We also talk about, are you cloud ready? We're talking about cloud, I know there's a big uh, announcement. I keep picking on you, Steve, you sat too close and you know that about me. Uh, you guys are doing the, the Microsoft Cloud. Hybrid cloud system. The Microsoft HyperCloud system, which is an all-in-one system that the cloud can be located on-premise, and you can also, it's its a hybrid, so it can also be uploaded to Azure and be able to incorporate some of those, and they're back there under cloud. If you go back to data center, we have some that I'm actually a part of, DSS, Data Center Scalable Solutions, where we have three different servers and a storage device that has two servers embedded in the box that gives you 720 terabytes of data in one box. It's incredible, and go back and check that out as well. So there's some cool things. Next is right here, we'll talk about the Cyber Crime Lab. This is as scary as it is cool. Because those of you that know what a zero day attack is, a zero day attack is a cyber attack that happens that first day it hits. And the problem with those attacks is, the, you know, the companies out there that monitor all that haven't had time to, to build anything to combat it because it's brand new and nobody even knows what it is yet. So the zero day attacks can bring a network down, bring an organization down, they can bring whole governments and countries down. And so what we do in this group is we work with organizations to find out how can we you know, prevent these from happening in the first place, but then if they do, what's the best strategy and, and how can we develop a strategy to combat those? So there's some really cool stuff going on there. I'd encourage you to check that out. And the last thing I want to talk about is the IoT Smart House. When I say IoT, most of you in this room know IoT is Internet of Things. Uh, I have a tracker right here that tracks my steps. So I've been getting some really good steps these past couple of days because this place is big. I'm walking nonstop. I'm sure you all are too. So the cool thing about it is it syncs to my phone. That data tracks my heart rate, how many steps, how much physical activity I have. I'm working out when my heart rate's elevated. And that's great for me. But what if my doctor wanted to use it to say, hey, we're noticing a trend with your health that's not good. Come on in. That's what this Internet of Health things can help you with here. The tying IoT back to the house. We're doing some really advanced things there, more than just the thermostat. You've all heard of the thermostat. You can, it's an app on your phone. You can adjust your thermostat on your way home. If you left the house and left the air down too cold, you can adjust it on your way into work once you get to work. That's all great. But take that a step further. 
sensors on every window and every door, kind of like your house alarm, but tied into the internet. So that it also ties in with the insurance companies. So here's the interesting part. Insurance companies know, and it's statistically proven, that events that happen at your home when you're physically there are a much less cost and a much less sm uh, smaller risk than if you're out of town. So if you're home and your hot water tank breaks, first thing you're going to do is grab towels, a bucket, get everybody in the house and get over there to address it, and the, man uh, the, the damage may still be there, but it'll be minimal. If you're out of town in Hawaii and you don't get home for a week and it happened a week earlier, you're going to have a lot more damage than water, a foot of water from sitting in your house for you know, a week. And so what this does is when you leave the house, you left the back window open, it'll send an alert to your phone, text message, even these devices can get notifications now and say, hey, you left that window open, so you turn around and go home. But here's the real interesting part. Through this technology, you can work with insurance companies and insurance, you know, people that are getting the insurance and say, we're going to dynamically adjust your premium and your rate based on, in real time, whether you're home or not. And so what that does is not just whether you're there or not, but leave your windows open, you know, different things going on, there's formulas and algorithms to pinpoint how you can best keep your rate as low as possible. And so it's not about a big brother part, you know, idea, it's more about empowering the homeowner to do things that are going to protect their assets, because if their assets are protected, their insurance premiums are lower and the cost is lower for the insurance company, everybody wins through this use of technology. So be sure to check that out. So that's what we have for you today. We hope you've enjoyed the presentation, giving you a little bit of an insight into some of the future technologies that we're working on here at Dell. And if I can leave you with one thing, I want to leave you with this. As you're walking around and you see thousands of solutions, and there's thousands of them in this room alone, and you're in charge of, of, of the direction of your IT organization at your business or whatever organization you're in, don't allow this to be confusing. All we need to do is work with your salesperson who we've identified from your area, from your account, to be able to formulate and prescribe a, a solution that's very specific to your business need. To us, it's not about coming in and selling you a bunch of stuff because that's a one-time thing. We want to take a relationship over years to understand your business. And while that sounds like a sales line, I know it does, I've been in sales, it's also very real because the best relationships that we have at Dell are the ones that we've invested years in and it's a beneficial relationship on both sides. So we hope to do that with you as well. So thanks for your time today. Again, I'm Lee Burnett. You can follow me on Twitter, at Lee Burnett, E-M-E-N. Thanks for joining us today. We'll talk to you soon. You know, as I said earlier, Dell World concluded yesterday, and the uh, the closing plenary at the event here in Austin was just a uh, fascinating discussion about uh, the connected future, with a lot of emphasis on the Internet of Things, both industrial and commercial. Had some really interesting uh, speakers that were on the six-person panel that closed it out. I'm going to show you a clip of it here. And we're going to hear from Anish Chopra, who's the co-founder of Hunch Analytics. And he's going to talk about innovation, and then he's going to move into IoT in the healthcare vertical and talk about some of the transformative power that you could bring through uh, just a robust data capturing and analytic model. And then we're going to hear a little bit from Joyce Mullen, who's the VP GM of Dell OEM Solutions. She's going to give us some further examples of IoT applications in the healthcare vertical that have both you know, implications for consumers and for the enterprise, in this case, uh, insurance companies. And then we're going to hear a little bit from Paul Rogers, who is the uh, general manager of GE's Industrial Cybersecurity Division. And he's going to take us out of that healthcare vertical and into a really powerful solution that GE deployed that while it might seem really simple, it just had huge promise for the oil and gas vertical. So this is a great discussion, and it's going to be uh, moderated there by uh, Arthi Shahani, who's an NPR technology reporter for their business desk. And uh, like I said, this is just an exerted clip. We have a, a much larger clip up on our YouTube channel if you want to take a look at the whole thing. So let's join this discussion. Just to take this in context, uh, yesterday the president unveiled the strategy for American innovation and once again reiterated that infrastructure in the modern economy includes digital assets. And so you're going to see a lot more continued investment in, in what I believe to be uh, smarter cities and other foundational infrastructure that can be part of applications. But this is also about the problems that we're looking to solve. In healthcare, we believe that 30% of the spend is not uh, valuable. And the opportunity for the IoT to help keep people in the home longer without having to go to the hospital is a huge opportunity.
just as the President's goal to get doubling of our energy productivity levels so we can ex uh, extract more value from the energy we do produce uh, in the home or in the office. Well, a huge opportunity, but also some hype around it, right? So when I think about, for example, in the health and fitness space, I can track my steps and then I can gamify the tracking of my steps. So it's not just a pedometer, but it's suddenly a competition with all of my loved ones or my mile time or whatever. But beyond gamification, um, what exactly are we getting? Like, what kind of interesting data analytics are we getting in health and fitness in particular, maybe? Maybe I'll just start to get down on this piece because this is a critical opportunity. The, the idea that we're gonna be quantifying ourselves is interesting, but in the context of how people are uh, engaging the healthcare system, we're gonna see a different model. Uh, uh, a healthcare organization now that's responsible for your entirety of your care may be actually prescribing that you censor up the home or censor up your loved one because they want to be more aware of an alert to keep you from falling sicker. So it may be a prescription for a sensor or monitor that the doctor and their care team is engaging with you so that they can keep you safer at home as opposed to just we all individually have put up our... And the idea being that you're not always at the doctor's office and so a way to extend the ability to see what's happening with you when you're not there. And, and the point of the punchline here is that there's a business model. The, the government's now giving you a check if you're a doctor that keeps people out of the hospital, you make more money keeping people healthier. And so with a business model, a problem to solve, and data, you're going to see those combinations emerge into... And we have a bunch of customers working on creating products and solutions to meet those needs right now. Yes. So examples include things like Health Net Connect, where you can understand, after you've been um, discharged from the hospital, whether the patient is taking their medication on time. The way they do that is by instrumenting a pill box. And if the, if the patient doesn't take the pill, they get a call from their provider or their nurse and uh, they say, hey, don't take your medicine. And the readmission rates to hospitals with that solution are down by 30%. So it actually works. You can do that with flossing. Yeah, you can do it with flossing. There's such a stratification in the maturities of, of the industry. So when you look at taking data analytics from a jet engine that's in flight and how important and technologically advanced that is, and then compare it to an industry like oil and gas, when you think in terms of oil fields, we had a solution where we went to an oil field customer and we were super excited. It was very advanced. It was going to optimize the oil field. We gave our presentation, talked about timing and, and cost. We all high five that we had nailed it. And the question back to us was, that is great, we see that as the future, but could you tell us if the equipment is on? And so we did this. <laughs> you know, how long would it tell, take to tell us if it's on or not? Well, then you get back to the value of on, off. It took them three weeks to understand whether a drill rig was down or not. That's three weeks of lost production. So a week's worth of technology working with this customer saved millions of dollars for something as simple as on. So I think that's a great all right, folks. Well, we appreciate you joining us for an inside look at the Dell World Exhibition here in Austin, Texas. Uh, for coverage of the event, including multimedia coverage, I'd encourage you to check out rcrwireless.com as well as the RCR Wireless News Channel, uh, YouTube channel, rather. And then you know why you're there? You can subscribe to our daily news blast, which will deliver the latest ICT and telecom headlines right to your inbox every day. In the meantime, I appreciate you joining us for HeadNet Happenings. Looking forward to a great show at uh, the same time next week. We're going to take you inside the HetNet Expo hosted by PCIA out in Los Angeles. So be sure to join us for that. Thanks for tuning in. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.